So I wanna show you guys quickly what might be my new favorite lens and what makes it special. So look at this shot here. This seems really simple. It's just a shot of a Sony camera, but there is so much happening in this frame. The bottom left-hand side, we have some washout happening. Then we have on the bottom here, also an elliptical flare. Then over on the top, we have these light beams coming over top of the lens. And then in the corner, we have almost like a light leak haze happening four different things in what is such a normal shot. I didn't have any lights. This is special. And I got this lens for as much as Uber Eats costs for dinner. And when something for under $100 can dramatically change your cinematography, it's worthwhile talking on in here. As you know on this channel, I love cinematography. I'm a director and cinematographer. What I wanna to talk today is about this. Well, almost this, let me, this, this is not part of this. And actually neither is this. But I don't actually think I have a back cap, so I'm just gonna put that back on. That's the adapter. But anyways, this, this is the Helios 44-2. It's actually a 58 mil lens, but that's what it's called. It's an old Russian lens. It's a fantastic piece of glass. I've finally bought one of these. I splurged and it cost me the rifle price of $69. I'm gonna put a link because I think all of you who are shooting should make this the next lens purchase you make. It's a vintage lens. I don't know when it was manufactured. If you wanna know all the crazy details, go over to Mark Holt's video. He's another guy from Toronto here, I believe. And he has a really cool video where he goes into all the detail about this. But I'm just gonna show you some test footage I shot on this and why I wanna use this more and more and more on my shoots. You know, lenses now are getting amazing with all of the autofocus that they have and the sharpness and the clarity. But if that's all you're looking for in your lenses is sharpness and autofocus, you're missing out on something that's really important to the lens and that's character. Character is what separates different lenses. See, the stock lens that you get with your camera, the 18 to 55, there is zero character in that lens. It's minimally sharp most of the time. It's cheap plastic. It's the worst components that they can put into a lens. And it's not that exciting. The images end up being really deep in depth of field, which again, isn't a bad thing, but most of the time doesn't create the most interesting shot because you're usually not shooting somewhere that's that pretty. But with a lens like the Helios 44-2, this 58 mm lens, it renders some of the most interesting bokeh that I've seen on anything outside of an anamorphic lens. And why that's cool is anamorphic lenses are very expensive to shoot. I've used them on lots of shoots. Uh, I usually prefer them over spherical unless it's the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses. I just don't really like them. I've used them on some shoots. I find them the least exciting anamorphic lens out there. So let me talk why I love this lens and kind of some of the characteristics about it. First off, it covers a full frame sensor. So on my FX9, I can shoot full frame on that 6K sensor, which it only shoots DCI 4K, but still nonetheless, it covers the full sensor, which which is amazing because the further you get out on this lens, the more interesting the bokeh is. And what's cool is it's not consistent. That's what's awesome about this, is they call it the swirly bokeh, because you see in the middle here, the bokeh becomes a circle. But then as you push that more to the edge, it almost becomes like an elliptical, like oval sort of egg shape. It's really interesting how it actually shifts through the image. And why I like that too, if you see this footage when I went out for a little photo shoot with my buddy Vic and our producer Kim, we got some really cool characteristics out of this lens just by shooting Kim towards the sun, backlighting her, all sorts of crazy stuff was going on in this lens. And to me, that's way more interesting. If I'm trying to have unique footage that separates me from other cinematographers out there, I'm gonna wanna shoot on a lens like this. You know, my favorite lens that I have still in my arsenal is the Sigma 24 mil. You can see some of the shots here. It's just a beautiful lens that's really wide and really shallow, which lends it well when you wanna crop on 235. But the more I was shooting with this lens, this 58 mil Helios lens that morning, the more I was, ugh, I started to really like what was coming out of this. And what's great about this lens too is it's a stiff focus. Sometimes on older vintage lenses, they're really loose or they're too stiff and it can become a bit of a battle trying to work with them. Also a nice thing too is the f-stops on this were a bit stiff. My collection of vintage lenses that I have here at the office, a lot of the f-stops are so loose that you're constantly messing up your shot halfway through. But I found at least the version that I have, the f-stops here, it's a bit stiffer, which is actually really helpful so you don't have to put tape on it. Now, Iron Glass does adapt these into proper cinema lenses with, with proper gears and focal markings. But for the time being, for under 100 bucks, this is probably the nicest lens you can get out there. I think it trumps 
the Canon FD50. To me, this is my favorite vintage lens that I have, and I just wanna shoot entire projects on it. One really interesting thing that happened with this lens too is when I went wide open, it became really milky. It introduced this a white haze over it, almost like I was using a fog filter. And I didn't necessarily hate that because it kind of felt like glass was in front of the lens. And on some of my videos, like the music video I did for Harm, I actually smashed glass, glued it together, and put it in a matte box so that I could shoot through it and have more light beams coming through. It made the image look more interesting. But you just get that with this lens. It was as if there was all sorts of translucent material in front of this. And as I joke on this channel, you should always try and shoot through translucent crap because it has more interesting layers to your image but this lens, just on its own, in this park here, was doing all of that. Now, sometimes this over flares, that's a term that I've made up, where it completely blows out your entire image if you point it directly towards the sun. That can be a bit difficult and can ruin a shot, so you have to be a bit careful, but that's something you can work around and it doesn't last that long. If you notice it happens, you just pan away. Also, being that it's just a 49 millimeter in diameter, you may need to get step rings like this so that you can use a normal size. This is a 77 mil ND filter, so you wanna get these step rings to be able to adapt it to that, or you can get ND filters that fit on 49 millimeters, but for me, I don't wanna have to buy ND filters for every size lens out there, I just use these step rings. So let's look a little bit of the footage here and I can kind of give you a commentary. I actually, this footage probably needs to be warmed up just a bit, it was a bit blue. This lens seems to put a bit of a blue haze over everything. But you can see here the shot with Kim, the background has this very unique, very interesting bokeh where it has a texture almost to the bokeh. It's not overly smooth. It kind of has a, its own character and grit to it that for me is way different than any lens you could use in this circumstance. It kind of feels a bit like you're on the far end of a 70 to 200. But what's great is it's only 58 mils and it's much tinier and lighter than using a full zoom lens. Here you can see some of the flares here, like I was talking, it can kind of over flare when you're right in close on the image. But I do love the beams that are coming across here. Let me actually turn off my 4K crop so you can see the whole image here. I had the anamorphic crop. But here, yeah, you can see these beams coming over top. And what's really cool is, I'll pause it here, is those blurs up in this top corner, those are actually people. But this depth of field is so different that you couldn't really make that out. So I'm just in the park here shooting Kim holding her A7 III here. And you're getting all this beautiful flare. Look at, there's three different types of flare here. We have this washout on the left side. We have these elliptical flares in the bottom left. And then we even have the beams coming over the Sony lens here. And then even some haze coming in on the bottom right hand of frame. There's so much happening happening in this frame and I didn't have any extra filters on the front of this besides an ND filter. So for me, this is a unique frame and allows me to get something really beautiful just by shooting with no lights pointing towards the sun on a normal day. You kind of have to keep people near the middle of the frame when you're wide open on this lens or else the focus starts to fall off. But like there's lenses like I've used like the Hawkeye's anamorphic lenses that they shot moonlight on that the focus is all over the place on those, but that's kind of part of the charm. You'll have part of someone's head out of focus, but their eyes are in focus. It's okay sometimes to have that. Your image doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of my issue with new lenses. Like I love my 2.8 16 to 35 mil by Sony that I'm using here, but it's just too perfect. There's no character to it. It's not that interesting. I want footage that is unique. So you can kind of see the spherical vibe of this bouquet. Around the corners, it starts to curve. Around the center, it's more circular, but it has this kind of they call it the swirly bokeh, where it kind of feels like someone smushed the image a bit around the edges. But I love that. To me, it gives it a bit more of an anamorphic quality. Here we are. What's great about this lens too is even when you shoot an entire frame out of focus, for me, it still works because everything looks different. There's a texture to even the out of focus parts of the frame, where sometimes on other lenses, when it's out of focus, it just becomes a mush and it feels you know, like a mistake. But for this, even some of the mistakes that you make with the lens make the shot more interesting. I would use this in an edit, even though nothing besides maybe the label there is actually in focus. There you go, guys. Before you go buy a gimbal or buy any more equipment, if you don't have a good mic, buy that first because good audio is more important than anything in your videos. Besides that, go grab one of these lenses. They're under $100. It's fun. It'll help you get back to manual focusing. Not only will it help improve just boring shots for you, like when you're doing interviews and the background is so-so, you can also practice your manual focus with this. It's a really helpful way for that. So I love this lens. I completely adore it. I'm not sponsored by anyone. The Russians are not paying me to put this out there. <laughs>
You can find this lens pretty much anywhere, eBay, Amazon, Etsy. That's where I actually bought it, I bought it off Etsy. But I have some links below if you wanna see the exact lens in your country. So go click on that and check that out. But thank you guys. I'm gonna get out of here because I wanna go shoot with this lens. Thank you.